I have probably said that the oscilloscope is my favorite test tool at least 100 times. And even though I mostly show bench style scopes in my videos, I have had and used this USB based PicoScope for a very long time. The Element 14 community sent it to me like 100 years ago for a road test review, but a lot has changed with the software since then. If you have never heard of PicoScope or Pico technology, then everything here is going to be new. If you have heard of them, then maybe you're like me and didn't realize that their already great software had taken a big step forward. In this video, we look at PicoScope 7, its basic controls, some measurements it does that other oscilloscopes do not, and check out my first i3C device with a serial decoder. And with that, welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, let's go measure. The road test program is what got me interested in the Element 14 community in the first place. And while the PicoScope 2000A was not my first road test, it is the only one I continue to use today. This small USB device has two analog input channels and one arbitrary waveform generator output. It samples up to 100 mega samples per second with an analog bandwidth of 10 megahertz and eight kilosamples of acquisition memory. Pico Technology has several other models with more bandwidth, higher sample rates, deeper memory, and some that support active probes. In fact, while putting together this video, Pico Technology introduced the 3000E series, which samples at 5 giga samples per second and has bandwidths up to 500 megahertz. Here's the thing, regardless of whether you have the latest hardware or like in my case, an older unit, their software works across all the models and the measurements are only limited by the hardware's inherent capabilities. Until recently, like when I started this video, I was still using PicoScope 6. I missed the version 7 release, which technically might have been a couple of years ago. First off, I appreciate the default dark mode and how the configurable waveform area dominates the application window. At the top are time base and trigger settings, while on the left are vertical controls, tools, and measurements. To start off, let's make a measurement using the AWG connected to channel A. In the generator settings, I turn on a 1 kHz sine wave and then scale it by scrolling with the mouse wheel. And finally, the trigger needs to change from none or free run to auto. It already defaults on a rising edge, and so with that, we get a stable display. There is an auto setup, and the scales let you individually auto scale them continuously, which we'll take a look at later. When hovering over the scope box, scrolling the mouse wheel changes the time base settings, which was a little counterintuitive to me because scrolling in the waveform area creates a zoom. However, I really like the mini map. It makes navigating the zoomed waveform super easy. Okay, let's be honest, there are like 100 reasons why sine waves are boring. So let's look at something that's a little more complex. One thing I really like in the AWG is how you can define a binary or hex pattern as a bit sequence. And this might seem like a minor thing, but neither my fancy AWG or a tool and software as versatile as the digital discovery lets you do that. Okay, well in waveforms, you can type in the pattern kinda, but it's not as easy as just pasting in a string like the binary value of decimal number 100. Now that we've got the arbitrary bit stream, we can take a look at a cool measurement feature that I have not seen on other oscilloscopes. Deep measure creates a table with 13 parameters of each cycle of a waveform. You can even search for values of a specific parameter or create a filter. This is very different from measure all or statistical tables on other oscilloscopes because PicoScope is making a cycle by cycle measurement table. And one way we can use this is to combine it with my favorite trigger type. But since we have this long pulse width, we can trigger on that. So let's set up a pulse width trigger in the positive direction and qualify it with being greater than 200 microseconds. And now our display is stable and focused on the long pulse. In the explainer video I did on oscilloscope triggers, I go into other trigger modes and provide at least one example of why I like the pulse width so much. It is my favorite trigger. Well, after the basic edge. Okay, now let's go decode some I3C traffic. A follow on to the I squared C protocol is I3C. It adds a bunch of new features and is backward compatible. Turns out PicoScope 7 is the only oscilloscope I have with an I3C or I3C decoder. Previously, I looked at the MCX N947 Freedom board from NXP. This board has a temperature sensor which communicates using I3C. 
To demonstrate, I connect 10 to 1 passive probes to the SDA and SCL lines of the FRDM. In PicoScope 7, I change channels A and B to auto scale and configure their inputs for a 10x probe. Then I set the trigger to an edge on channel A and drag the trigger point roughly halfway up. Now I can zoom the time base so that we can see a single packet and move the waveform over just a little bit. Okay, now I can click on the serial decode button and take a second to admire all of the available options before selecting I3C basic. First, we need to tell the decoder which channel is the clock and data, and then we can configure the graphic and table areas. Between the table and on graph decoder, you can see something weird is happening with writes, but here we only care about reads. So I set up a filter to show only those. Since we can see the data field in two different places, let's change the table view to decimal, which now shows the values are 26192 and 26176. For those that understand room temperature, you might recognize one of those numbers. In hex, notice that the last four bits are always zero. Turns out the sensor outputs a 12-bit value and the eight MSBs are the integer with the last four bits being the decimal because each bit is 1 16th of a degree. So at least in this case, for positive temperatures, the I3C decoder can let us quickly see the measured temperature. Now I wanna make a protocol comparison. Here I have an I squared C based light or LUX sensor connected to a different microcontroller. I have configured this one to run at 400 kilohertz just like the I3C sensor. Focusing on just the clock, notice the frequency is about 400 kilohertz, but the positive pulse width is about 1.5 microseconds. The slow rise time is probably because of large pull-up resistors, but for this comparison, that does not matter. Just remember, we have a video where I talk about determining proper pull-up resistors by measuring rise times on I2C buses. Anyway, by turning on a reference waveform of the previous I3C clock we captured, you might notice the big difference in the pulses. The I3C clock has a super short pulse width compared to the clock period. And as far as I understand, that is the key to how I3C devices can share a bus with I2C, but do things that I2C doesn't understand. But that's a topic for another video. Overall, PicoScope 7 software is a significant update to version 6. It has some unique measurement capabilities like deep measure and a highly configurable AWG. I really like the wide array of serial decodes and that they are included with the software. I should briefly mention a few of the other 100 things that the software does, like it has a built-in history mode, the math editor is extremely detailed, the FFT or spectrum view is decent, and something I should have mentioned at the start is that you can download the free software and use a demo instrument to check out its capabilities right now. Hey, thanks for watching. Check the link below for show notes on the Element 14 community. You'll find lots of great stuff over there. If you want to see more videos from me or the other host, tap or click the things on the screen. For now, it is time for me to get back to my electronics workbench.